Hello and welcome. Today we will be conducting a lab to teach the students that they have to explore and conduct a systematic investigation to be able to understand and explain a science concept. The name of this lab is Naturally Occurring. The materials you will need for this lab include tennis balls or stones, pins, pennies, droppers, a bucket, water, whiteboards, and dry erase markers. The Sunshine State Standards in this lab have students raise questions about the natural world, investigate them individually and in teams through free exploration and systematic investigations, and generate appropriate explanations based on those explorations. The inquiry question for this lab is, choose one of the following questions. How can you make a ball bounce on water? How can you make a pin float on water? Can you put more drops of water on the heads or tails side of a penny? Design an exploration or experiment to help you answer your question. Explain why you think so based on the prior knowledge or observation of a natural phenomenon. The conclusion statement for this lab is, a ball can slightly bounce on water, but if you throw it at an angle with enough force, it will bounce more. A pin can float on water because of surface tension, in which water is resisting the external force of the pin. Both sides of a penny have the same area, so both sides will hold the same amount of water. Now on to the lab. Alright, so the first experiment we're going to do is we're going to float the pin on the surface of the water. So here we go. As you can see, the pin is floating perfectly on the surface of the water due to the surface tension. Now if I touch the pin, the pin will sink because I break or pop the surface tension. So. As you can see, the pin has sunk all the way to the bottom of the bucket. The next experiment we're going to do is we're going to test to see if you can fit more drops on the heads or tail side of a penny. So I'm going to start with the tail side, I take my dropper, dip it into the bucket that we just used for the pin, and I'm going to start dropping onto this penny. I'm keeping count in my head. About 20 drops. Twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-seven drops and it broke. Now we're gonna go for the head side. The tail side had twenty-seven drops. We're just gonna test. exactly 27, just like the tail side. The third and final part of this lab involves using tennis balls or stones to identify the properties of surface tension on a body of water. Have your students grab a tennis ball or stone and have them skip it across the surface of the water. The stone will have a greater effect ricocheting off the surface tension of the water due to its physical properties. A tennis ball will work, although the results will not be as obvious as that of the stone. A possible question to ask your students is, what characteristic or name do you give a material that repels or is afraid of water? That's all for today's lab. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.